Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And this is going to be another in my ongoing series on blend modes. And I want to have a rant about one of the commonest mistakes that I see when people are trying to explain blend modes to you. And in addition to that, I'm going to show you the maths behind a number of different blend modes, including screen, multiply, overlay, and even the very mysterious blend mode called exclusion. So anyway, let's get down to it. So the thing that you'll see whenever anybody tries to explain blend modes to you is that they will take two images and they will show you this is what subtract looks like or this is what exclusion looks like. And you go, well, that is actually no use to me at all. I don't really understand what all this blend mode stuff is about. And that's because blend modes are not primarily designed to blend two images. They are primarily designed to address specific compositing tasks. Now, it is true that in some cases you can create useful looks using blend modes. But as I say, that's not their primary intended purpose. Although, curiously, the four blend modes that are most useful for look creation are not actually available in Apple Motion. And I've done a separate tutorial on this particular topic. So if anybody's telling you about creating looks, they're really not helping you to, to understand what blend modes are at all. So in order to help you get a better understanding of this, I'm going to look at a set of blend modes that sits in this category here. So the add, light and screen, color dodge and linear dodge. And I'm going to use this lens flare as an example. So you'll notice that blend modes come in groups and there's a good reason for that, which is that within each group, there are different ways of approaching specific tasks. And in this group here, the task that's being addressed is essentially how to add lighting effects. So that's why I've chosen a lens flare for this. So if we were to select an add for this, you'll see we've got our lens flare composited over our lake. And the reason for that is that the pixel values of the two layers are being added together. So wherever the lens flare is black, nothing much is happening because black is zero. And wherever you add zero to anything, you're not going to make any change. And an important thing to note here is that it is order agnostic. So if I were to put my lake above my lens flare and set it to add, we've got exactly the same result. And it's obvious why that is. X plus Y gives exactly the same result as Y plus X. But I'm just going to swap that back again because that's a bit too confusing. So let's go on down the list. So Lighten is an interesting one. Lighten doesn't actually blend the two sets of pixel values at all. It simply looks at the relative pixel values and decides that it's going to choose whichever is the brighter. So obviously most of the lens flare image is black and wherever that's the case, the background pixels are being selected instead. But wherever any pixel is brighter than the background, we're seeing only the foreground pixel, not a mix of it. It's literally just an either or situation. And that's the mathematical operation known as maximum, which is in fact the name given to lighten in other applications. So that's lighten and screen is another one. And we're actually going to come back to screen and I'm going to show you how we can build our own version right here in motion. That screen, you can see it's got a very nice smooth result. And for compositing this lens flare, I would say that's the best way to go. Color Dodge is a very special case. It's too complicated for me to explain it here and we'll pass that one by. But it is doing the same thing of just adding in the lens flare over the top of the background. If you're interested in the maths of that, it divides the bottom layer by the inverted top layer. And you can see it's having a strong influence on the color as the name implies. So Linear Dodge is another one. It's very similar to Screen, but in this case, it doesn't actually work quite as well. So there's Screen and there's Linear Dodge. It's basically blowing out that background a bit too much for my taste. But Linear Dodge is essentially the same as Add. It's just using a different method to get there. A key difference in this case is that Add is creating white values that are well above 100%, whereas with Linear Dodge, they are clamped at 100%. So let's just come back to screen and I want to show you that we can actually build our own version of it. And here is the formula for screen. 
So basically we invert both the foreground and the background, then we multiply them together, and then we invert the result. So let's do that. So I'm going to come over to filters and color and negative. Negative obviously inverts things. So I'm going to drop a negative onto both the foreground and the background. So I'm going to option drag it onto there, and then I'm going to option drag it onto the group. So you can see we've inverted both layers and then we're re-inverting it at the top here. And as I say, the actual compositing operation, once the inversion has been done, is multiply. So let's try that, and there you go. We're back to what screen actually looks like. So you can see that a lot of blend modes, in fact, most blend modes, are actually built out of the basic blend modes. And I actually want to show you something really quite interesting about the blend mode called overlay. Let's just remove these negatives and let's just have a look at overlay. So overlay, if I choose that, is actually a combination of multiply and screen. So you can probably see that in these bright areas, it's looking very similar to screen, but in the dark areas, it's looking really quite dark. So we can test this by actually selecting our foreground layer and coming to filters and color and levels. And then if we open up this histogram, so basically overlay is making a decision based on whether pixel values are above or below mid gray. So I can show you that by coming to this blackout value and entering the value of 0.5 for that. And now you can probably see, hopefully you can see, that we're actually just getting the screen component. This looks pretty much exactly the same as when we were using screen as the blend mode. Let's just remind ourselves, turn off levels and switch to screen. You can see it's very, very similar. And conversely, everything below mid gray is being multiplied. So let's have a look at that. So let's quickly remind ourselves what multiply looked like. It looks like this. So in order to replicate that, let's switch back to overlay. So in this case, we need to put the levels on the lake image instead and turn it back on again. And let's do the same thing. So in this case, we want the white out to be set to 0.5. And there you go, we're back to what the multiply looked like. So let's just confirm that. Let's just turn off that levels and switch this back to multiply. It confirms that we isolated the multiplier component of that overlay operation by doing what we did. Just a quick final word about the screen operation. So imagine we have a pixel value for the foreground of 0.9 and a background pixel value of 0.5. If we add those two together, you'll see we get 1.4, obviously. But using the screen operation, which is this, we only get 0.95. And so as long as the foreground and background pixel values are not above one in either case, the result will always be under 100%. And that is actually really quite useful. And that brings me back to my original point, which is that blend modes were designed to address very specific tasks. In this case, the task was adding a bright element over a background and getting a result that stays under 100%. And that brings me to my final and perhaps most important point, which is that generally speaking, the primary intended purpose of blend modes is not to composite images, but actually to composite mats or variants on mats. So you'll notice that in this case, the multiply blend mode is not particularly useful. It's not really creating an image we would ever especially want to use. So in this case, I've actually added a black and white gradient over the top of my landscape. And if I now set the blend mode to multiply, you can see that we've created this vignette. So everything that is black in the gradient is black in the lake image, and anything that's white in the gradient is see-through. We can see through to the lake image. And the reason for that is that black has a value of zero, and if you multiply anything by zero, you get zero back. In other words, black, of course. Conversely, if you multiply any value by one, you get the same original value back, which is why we're seeing the lake image wherever our gradient is white. And I can adjust that matte by adjusting the gradient. So 
we've created effectively a keyhole cutout using this black and white gradient. And as I've shown in another tutorial, this multiply method is the key component of the normal blend operation. And I'll link to that tutorial in the description. So to pursue this point about mats a little bit further, I'm going to duplicate this gradient and I'm going to set its blend mode to multiply. And then I'm going to move it over like this. Then what we're getting is a composite of those two gradient circles. And then if we were to put those two into a group like that and set the blend mode of that group to multiply like this, we're seeing through to the lake image through the composite of those two gradients. And we can go even further. We can look at swapping out this multiply operation here for that mysterious exclusion blend mode that we looked at right at the beginning. And now it becomes obvious what that is all about. It's actually about creating Boolean operations between black and white images. I turn off my lake image. We've created this Boolean exclusion operation, otherwise known as XOR. And that's made a pretty useful mat for our background, as you can see. So in other words, a blend mode that seemed to make absolutely no sense at all when used with two images makes complete sense when we use it with two black and white matte objects. So you see how far we've come from that original mistaken impression that blend modes are about compositing images and creating looks. So in essence, blend modes are mathematical operations designed to perform very specific compositing tasks. And once you've begun to understand those mathematical operations, you can begin to understand how blend modes work and more importantly, what sort of tasks they are most useful in helping with. So I know I've bombarded you with a lot of information, but I hope some of it has made sense. Thanks very much indeed for watching and I'll see you again soon.